I'm State Representative Mary Masher from Iowa City, and I represent House District 86. That is the southeastern part of Iowa City, uh, including the towns of Hills and University Heights. Uh, I have been a state legislator for the last 26 years, and have also, in my other job, was an elementary school teacher in Iowa City. And I spent many years in the classroom and teaching fifth and sixth graders. I also have a counseling education background. So that also was a part of my education and schooling. I attended the University of Iowa and uh, had a BA in education uh, with elementary focus and then also got a master's degree in counseling education. So I also was an elementary counselor during part of my teaching career. So I've had kind of a broad experience, but that's exactly what uh, people want in legislators. We want a variety of folks with different backgrounds. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have all lawyers in the legislature or people who are all teachers. We want lawyers and teachers and farmers and uh, business owners and folks from all different kinds of backgrounds, which is why the legislature works and why it is such an important um, part of our state government and part of our government is the fact that we do have a variety of people from different backgrounds who work there. So as part of my schooling, I attended the University of Iowa and I spent a lot of time um, looking at what is the role of government in education and the fact that we need good people um, to work on those issues and to make sure that there is representation there from teachers and the people who are actually impacted, the students who are in those classrooms. So I, I got involved in politics at a very early age uh, through my parents. I come from a large family. My dad was a school board member. I have brothers and sisters who have been school board members. And then I have also had brothers and sisters that have been on city council and done other things as well. So we had a very political family and a family that loved to talk about um, the issues of the day and why those things were important. My parents always encouraged us to vote. They knew how important voting was in the election process, but then also in making sure that people had representation. They always said, don't complain if you don't vote, because obviously that is your voice and that's your opportunity to be able to be a part of politics. So in a big family, which I had 12 brothers and sisters in our family, um, there's a lot of negotiating and a lot of compromising that has to occur just naturally when you've got that many children. And so I think I learned a lot about how you don't always get what you want and you always have to be patient. Sometimes it takes a long time to be able to get the things you do want. And so uh, persistence and patience, those are virtues that my mom and dad taught us along with hard work and making sure that you put in the time and the energy to do a good job. So when I look at my, my family background and my parents, my dad was very involved in the NFO, which was the National Farmers Organization. And that particular organization was one that was very involved in helping farmers have a representation at the table in terms of their uh, food prices, the prices they were getting for their products, corn, soybeans, cattle, hogs, those kinds of things. So again, I learned a lot from watching my dad at those meetings and seeing how they conducted meetings like that, and then how they worked with other farmers to try to get um, a coalition and a group together. My mom was the worker bee when it came to politics with helping with campaigns. She was the go-to person for a lot of folks in our community who were running for office. They knew that if uh, Lucille was on your side, then you had a good chance of being elected. And so mom would be the one to stuff the envelopes and make the phone calls and organize the coffees and to do all of those kinds of um, important groundwork for somebody to get elected. And so I learned that from her in terms of, um, again, the persistence and the hard work that it takes for somebody to be able to actually get elected to office. So that was an important part of my upbringing too. And um, I know my mom and dad were very proud when I decided to run for office. And uh, I think they felt like 
uh, that was an accomplishment for them as well because their daughter was willing to take on that challenge and be a part of the political process. So in state government, um, it takes all kinds. I mentioned that before that we have a diverse group of people there, but it also takes people who are willing to work together. Um, collaboration, cooperation, listening, it's so critical as a state legislator to be able to listen to each other and to hear what the other person is saying and to understand their point of view. It may be very different than your own, but that's all part of it is understanding that you need to work with that individual. And even if you don't agree with them on a particular issue, you may need them on another issue. And so it's important not to burn bridges and not to uh, alienate people who you're going to need in the future to help you. So I look at those kinds of things and I, think again, I learned a lot from my family and how to cooperate and collaborate and get along. Um, when you have a, a 420 acre farm, everybody has a role, everybody has a responsibility. And so that's the same in the legislature. We can't know everything about everything. So we each have our own expertise. Having been an educator and a teacher, then education tends to be my expertise. And people respect each other and um, understand that that individual has a very different background and a background that lends itself to having some expertise on that subject. So we count on each other that way, knowing that um, we just can't know everything about everything and it's impossible to be able to do that. So it's important for us to be able to work together and collaborate that way. When I think about um, my high school days and the things that I did in college, the thing I was going to mention to students especially, the more you get involved in extracurricular activities, whether it's student council, your school clubs, um, sports, all of those kinds of activities lend themselves to being a good individual and a good participant in whatever job you have, because it gives you a chance to experience other people, to work with diverse groups of individuals, and to be able to, again, show that respect for one another and to be able to um, work together for, to accomplish a goal, whether it's winning a game or whether it's a student council initiative or an issue that you're trying to work on as a group. Um, those are really key and really important things. Um, when I think about words of wisdom and things that I've learned from others, perseverance is probably the most important one. Um, in legislation, it often takes one or two or sometimes three or four or even five years for legislation to get through. It doesn't mean that it isn't a good idea. It just means that there aren't enough people in the legislature at that time to support it. And so it takes a lot of educating and a lot of perseverance in being able to help others understand the issue well. And that was one of the things I think my parents taught me as well is that don't give up. Um, sometimes things are hard, and it's the hard things that oftentimes give you the most satisfaction in the very end in terms of what you've been able to accomplish. So when I look at my legislative career and I look at the things that we've done in um, the Iowa General Assembly, I serve in the House and there are a hundred of us. In the Senate, there are 50 senators, and um, those individuals all have to agree um, to be able to get legislation passed doesn't have to be unanimous, but you have to have a 51%. That's 51 people in the House that support an idea. And again, in the Senate, 50% would be the 26 votes in the Senate. And then the governor has to sign it. So again, there's a process there and working with the governor is extremely important in all of this as well. So when I look back at my career, one of my biggest accomplishments that I feel best about is the early childhood legislation for four-year-old preschool. That was legislation that we had not enacted uh, before I came into the General Assembly. And it was something that was a real high priority for me because I know how important early childhood education is and what a difference it makes to the children who are involved in it. So that was something that uh, at the time Governor Culver supported and was extremely uh, valuable in helping us get the four-year-old preschool implemented. 
And again, I think of all of the children across Iowa who have benefited from that program. Maybe some of you who attended a four-year-old preschool and understand why that is so important and why that made a difference in your life. I hope you can reflect on that and some of the teachers you may have had back in preschool to understand that. The other one was smoke-free workplaces. In Iowa before, um, this has been over 10 years ago now, it used to be that people smoked everywhere, in bars, restaurants, um, out in public, any place they wanted to, basically. And obviously, we knew the dangers of secondhand smoke and what an impact that had, especially on children who don't oftentimes have the choice on whether they're going to smoke or not. And so that Smoke-Free Workplace Act was extremely important in helping Iowans be healthier. And again, it was something that in past years we had tried and tried and tried to get through, were unable to do so because the tobacco companies had a very powerful lobby that prevented it. When we have lobbyists, their job is to advocate for whatever group they are representing. And the lobby for the tobacco industry was very powerful and stopped any legislation that we tried to enact. And so to me, that was again, a very good example of persistence, patience, um, hard work, continuing to uh, not let it go because we knew how important that was um, and why that was something that was beneficial for all Iowans. Um, there were bar owners and restaurants who believed it would shut them down. They believed that they would no longer exist if they didn't have smoking in those locations. And we tried to convince them that that wasn't necessarily true. They might be able to get a different clientele. There might be more families and people who would come to their restaurants and bars if they had a smoke-free environment. And it was interesting, one of the senators who was most opposed to it in the beginning said that he had gone home at one time and one of his restaurant owners came to him and said, boy, do I have, some, I need to talk to you. And he said, what about? And he said, well, you passed that smoke-free workplace bill, right? And he said, yeah, I, I supported it. And he said, well, now I've had to buy more high chairs because I have more families coming into this restaurant bar. And he laughed and said, well, I'm glad to hear that. I know at the time you didn't see the wisdom in it and you didn't see why it was important, but I'm hoping you are now. So I think when you see things like that and you know that you've made a difference, um, that's one of the motivations that people have of going into politics. We want to do what is right for the people we represent and the people of Iowa. We want this to be a good state to raise your children, get a job, have a good income, and to be able to make be successful. And so whatever we can do in the legislative session to further that cause is one of the reasons, what motivates me. I like helping people. I often am able to contact people in the state government that they don't know about or wouldn't have that same contact with. And sometimes you can get more done um, with the state officials if they have a contact and somebody that can advocate for them. And that's one of the, the favorite parts of the job for me. I love the ability to be able to problem solve and to help individuals find solutions to the problems they have, whether it's child support payments or somebody who is not getting their health care coverage the way they should. And, um, and, and then again, as an advocate for education, whether it's at our early childhood level with preschool or K through 12 or community colleges or our um, college, private colleges and our universities, our public universities, education has always been a high priority for me and it's one of the things that I hope you will continue to uh, uh, work on and achieve. Whatever those goals might be, I hope you are able to accomplish them. It's so important and we need you in our um, state. We need you to be able to get good jobs here. And I'm hoping that um, by listening to me and uh, getting a chance to find out a little bit about what a state legislator does, that maybe some of you will be motivated to actually go into politics and become an elected official as well. We need you, we want you, and we hope that you'd be successful in that job as well. Thank you so much.
uh, good luck to you in your further pursuits and um, have a great day.